the mac and cheese you um, touched on, I thought that looked like some dry mac and cheese, you know. Uh, that's all I could think. Like, the whole time I was watching it, I was like, is that what she's really cooking for him? No one day didn't thank her. Yes, yes, you know what it is. Chatterbox, film review time. Don't know the don't know. Obviously, we got the crew here. It's the ladies' love. What's good, Andre? Don't know the yo, don't yo. know. The original garage skanker. What's good, Sean? Yes, yes. Yo. Here we go. And obviously, North London's wildest is the OG, the one and only. Is Des. What's good, man? And obviously, I'm um, Dan. Here we go. Boom. Let's get right into this one. We will be discussing Malcolm and Marie. Whoa, guys. <laughs> We're in black and white. <laughs> That's it. Because Malcolm and Marie is a 2021 American black and white romantic drama. Written, produced, and directed by Sam Levinson, who also directed Euphoria. The film stars John David Washington and Zendaya as the title characters. A night in the life of a film director and his girlfriend, whose relationship is tested following his latest film premiere. Remember, this is not a love story. This is a story of love. Oh, and John David and Zendaya also produced the film too. It's a proper in-house production, man. Now, to date, there have been mixed reviews about this film, and we two were conflicted. However, in true Chatterbox style, we wanted to bring it to your attention, you, the viewers. Now, during the trailer reaction, if you guys remember, if you don't, the link will be in the description, P wasn't impressed. Ladies Love was looking forward to the dialogue and general storyline, and Sean was not in favour of single location films. But there was an element of intrigue at the same time. So let's see if their views remain the same or if they've changed. Now, just to give you guys a bit of a flavour, uh, the IMDb rating is 6.8 out of 10. Rotten Tomatoes gave it 58%. And the New York Times said... A gorgeous Hollywood couple has an extended, exhausting argument in this claustrophobic example of pandemic filmmaking from Netflix. On the other hand, Rolling Stone said, turn the movie off at tw the 20 minute mark and you can ultimately still say you've seen the entire thing. Interesting. Guys, let's cut straight through to colour. Are you still conflicted after watching the film? I wasn't conflicted. This is a film... John David, Zendaya, I wanted to see them bring everything together. Uh, I was never conflicted either, so I wanted to watch it. I, mm. I was intrigued uh, to see what happened. Um, yeah, so let's talk about it soon. Can't wait. Yeah, for me, um, not my favourite film. Um, yeah, so I'll just wait to see what these guys have to say and give my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> so there is still some confliction I didn't mean individually as a group There's confliction between the opinions And clearly there still is But let's hear more You guys are excited to tell us Let's get to the real talk Being brutally honest The storyline, tell me your thoughts The performance, was it standout? And the chemistry You know, did it have an impact? What are you guys thinking? In terms of storyline, um, there, there is no story. It's an extended argument that goes in different directions, in my opinion. Their performances were, were good. Like they, um, they had multiple monologues, which was excellent. Um, Zendaya has a one at the end, which was good, where she's telling him to say thank you. I think that will like stuck in my head. And John David Washington had one where he's... Um, talking about a critic and he's walking back and forth and he's going on and on, but it was good. I enjoyed that. To be honest, the first 20 minutes, I was like, ah, oh, this feels like actors acting. Then after 20 minutes, I was in it and I, and I enjoyed it for the most part. But I wanted to see how this was going to unfold. And I thought it was, it was nicely put together. And at the end of it, I was, I was thinking, well, how many people actually can identify with this here? Is it a story that's been played before? And they've got, at the time, at the place, 
this storyline work for the couple? This is that's what I feel anyway. In relation to standing out performances, I think Zendaya she just pulled it out of the bag. For me, John David, he was like he was his typical self. Zendaya for me brought it out, and you saw the nuances in in her acting styles and skills, man. And in relation to chemistry, come on, man, you got two beautiful people together there. They bounce off each other, but at the same time, I think John David bounced off her more. I mean, for me, Zendaya, she was in control. As much as it wasn't my kind of film, I've got to say I agree with both of you in regard to the performances. I think um, they did really well in, you know, portraying a couple, I suppose, going through a bit of a lover's tiff or some kind of deep argument um, to discuss how they feel about each other. But I just think for me, it's just too deep. It's too deep for me personally. Again, I'm going to say, Des, yeah. Andre, I respect how you feel. But There's loads you know of messages, funny. man. Loads of messages. Couldn't relate to that, to be honest, in terms of that kind of relationship. But that made me interested to watch it, like that kind of relationship. And Because like, I was thinking to myself, they are toxic. That relationship is so toxic. And, and I was like, I don't think I want to be in a relationship if this is going to happen. Please, is this really going to happen? I can't deal with that. But I was interested, like, from beginning to end. Like, it really did hook, hook me in terms of that. Mm. But you got to remember how this conversation started. You going up there, collecting an award, and you're not even thanking your wife, who was the inspiration behind the movie. You know what I mean? Was That's she, it. though? Was no. she? Ah, but wasn't she? Wasn't she? Hey, listen, I got a couple of facts about the film, man. The budget was 2.5 million US dollars. Was it money well spent? What do you guys think? Taking into consideration what is reported uh, winning the release bid at 30 million dollars. 2.5 mil, where did that money go? 30 That's million a question. Dollars. It probably went it probably went to the actors, isn't it? <laughs> well, I don't know, man. Maybe to the actors or to prob probably for hiring that mansion that they um filmed it in, it's maybe. Definitely, it's definitely that location. Like you think those yeah. those things are cheap. <laughs> it was definitely for that location. They had, I think it's a private place as well. They had to buy mm. it up uh, and hire it out for however long they were filming for. So yeah, definitely. And in terms of the money, cool. That's good um, because I think um, the um, the crew got back end money off of it, like which they don't usually get. The crew because um, then they are pushed for that because um, the crew are from um, Euphoria. Sorry? Yeah, Euphoria. Euphoria. And because because mm. they didn't get to it, she said, "All right, let's let's get make them earn some money like by doing that." So I think that was great. I think oh, that's, that's fantastic really of her, and it goes just goes to show that. She is, she's, she's creating this kind of family of, of uh, actors and crew and everything else, man, keeping everybody close to her. And she's doing well. And I could see her going places. And that is a brave move. You know what I mean? And for Netflix to splash out 30 mil, they made their money back and everybody gets their bonus and everybody's still in a job. Someone who definitely made a few quid out of this one was uh, Levison, who wrote and directed uh, the film. However... It was written in one week and filmed whilst there was a forced break from filming Euphoria in June and July 2020. Perhaps due to the pandemic, we don't know. But with such knowledge, what are your thoughts around the concepts of the film? That makes sense, to be honest. It's a simple concept because, like, it's, it's, it's COVID. They can't go anywhere. So put two characters, two people in a place, minimal crew, story like that's 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 a simple that makes sense to me basically yeah yeah and i agree it's a no-brainer in it but but do you think um a lot of this could be partly like some of his own personal experiences it is it is that that the the um the, um, the not mentioning the wife thing is what he what happened to him apparently okay oh, oh. that's so interesting it, it, the story stemmed from there Onwards. Mm. Okay. Okay. So that that oh, that kind of makes sense then. I I, I guess. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like, why didn't he just um, talk to his wife about it? Why did he make a film? <laughs> <laughs> You're just making a film. <laughs> what? He's he's a filmmaker. He's a director. What? He's a producer. So why not? 
You know what I mean? <laughs> if I was a singer, I'd write a song about it. You know, how many people make songs and stuff about it, man? So that's love, pretty good. And I he just took, I think he just took the concept of euphoria as well. I just say, yeah, let's throw this one in about the person's addicted to drugs, trying to turn a life around <laughs> and all that kind of business, man. I've, it, it was all convenient. All I love convenient. that, Sean. I love that, Sean. Quiet, Wait, did he have sorry, to make a man. film about it? Like, sorry. <laughs> hey, a big man come on this show and just apologise to you. <laughs> no, but you know what though, oh, touching on what Des said there, like I, I definitely had um vibes of Rue, um, her character in Euphoria. Um I don't know, there was kind of like I don't know if it's just because it was her and like she still looks the same or whatever, but I still had like slight vibes of um her with all of the dialogue and all that. Um <laughs> and to be honest, I was I was kind of watching it and hoping um her girlfriend would actually turn up, <laughs> knock on the door and say, like, you know, um, yeah, I've been sleeping with Marie, by the way, Malcolm. It was also shot in black and white. In the trailer, the emphasis was placed on top drawer performances. Uh, to balance perhaps what wasn't actually there? Uh, did it add to the atmosphere of the film or were you left in a more tropospheric mood instead? I actually thought it was pretty slick. Um, what the, the, That was probably one of the best things about the film. You're looking forward to the performances because it's in black and white. I think it was so contrasty, but they just wanted to emphasise the performances as far as I'm concerned. And that black and white just brought it together. It, it's almost like contrasting of, uh, of performances, the contrast in, in acting styles, in personalities. I think that really emphasised the black and white nature to it. It helped you to home in on the performances, on the facial expressions even more. Andre said it, after about 20 minutes, he was in there with them. It kind of brought you in there. You had to go in there and feel what was going on in that home, in the te in feeling the tension, what was going on. I mean, the way he was eating his macaroni cheese that was made for him. And my mind was just like, dang, 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 dang. you know what I mean? And he's still trying to antagonize um, Marie. It's like, come on. But you saw that kind of anger and frustration in him as well. But at the same time, you saw kind of a jovial aspect of it. It's like he really wanted to antagonize her. And that's what people tend to do. You finish an argument, you want to start one back up, especially if you've lost the argument, you want to start it back up. And so what he started doing is making the noise, making a whole heap of noise to get her attention again and start it back up again. So whenever the argument was over, who started it back up? He did. The mac and cheese you um, touched on, I thought that looked like some dry mac and cheese, you know. Uh, that's all I could think. Like The whole time I was watching it, I was like, is that what she's really cooking for him? No wonder he didn't thank her. But no, no, I'm just joking. Yeah, no, no, that that that, that wasn't even dry mac and cheese. That was sloppy. That was sloppy. <laughs> Fired, you know? To dry mac and cheese, you know, you have to do. You got to put it in the oven, and that's macaroni cheese, man. It comes out as a bake. You put it in the oven, man. You don't just that look as though it's just being poured out of a tin. But I heard they had a chef in there cooking that mac and cheese. You know what I mean? With what? extra butter. It didn't come but... out like a true baked in, like, mama done, you get me? Sorry, man. That I just went on cheese, the mic. Man, that was just sloppy. That was just like, <laughs> nah. When I make a mac and cheese, man, I tell you, I've got mac and cheese in the fridge. Oh, ask P about my mac and cheese. <laughs> Stand <laughs> it. Hey, anyway, let me call, is, uh, let me call P. Hold on. Let me call P. <laughs> Hold on. Let me oh. ring him. P. Oh, my days. Well, go on, fam. Hey, Quick hey, one. what's going on? Uh, how's uh, how's Des's mac and cheese, man? Oh, Des can cook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <James. laughs> oh, man, yeah, you, you like that, that boy. Boy. What else made the film? I think the music, the soundtrack was dope. That soundtrack was mesmerizing, man. They had people like Dion Warwick up in there. They had James Brown up in there, man. They had Outkast. And the music was, it was in time with what was going on for them at the time as well. Beautiful music, man. Even Dio Warwick tweeted about where'd you get that song from? That song, I ain't heard that song in, in how many years? One of the songs that she, they played in, in, in that film. That scene in a bath where he obliterated her. Like, and it was like, oh, jeez, calm down. Like, he like totally 
obliterated her, but then she came back and he came back and it was just back and forth. So I personally watching it didn't feel like she's in control of the whole thing. Me okay. personally. All right. From from me watching it, all I saw was uh, emotional abuse. And she even said that. And the fact is, yeah, he had control. In fact, losing control was his form of gaining control because he was the one that was shouting and abusing her when she just kind of just calmly just said what she had to say, but more in an assertive voice. So, yeah, he was dominant because he was using, I suppose, being a, a masculine, being a bigger person physically and just just going at her. And they're, just both, ready to... they're both toxic. They're both toxic. Well, I, don't believe just because one, I don't believe just because one's louder... He, he's the most like abusive. Well, he, he was with, he was with she, the aggression. She cheated on him. She kept on taking drugs. She did this. She did that. To but him. look at the people so that he was after. He was just after time. vulnerable Horrible. people all the time. So this is what happens. He's using people to create films. So the the previous partners no, that he had. That's what she said. Also, that doesn't mean it's true. Yeah, but that's what she I'm said. That. That's what I'm taking. But at the end of the day, yeah, he was dominant in his role because he was more aggressive towards her. She didn't have to be. She was a ball. That's, not what that's, that's my what opinion I said, anyway. I said she's not always in control. That's what I said. Because you, you said she's always in control. I said sometimes he was, sometimes she was. So that's what I said. But well, I didn't really get abuse vibes. I, I think abuse. I, when I hear the word abuse, I really think deeply about abuse. And I think two people being together, they're adults, and you know they're making a, you know. Uh, an informed decision to stay with someone I don't know if that's necessarily abuse as such maybe there is some turmoil some toxicity to their re relationship and they love like it fuels um, you know the emotions or whatever they get a bit of a rush from it but abuse I, I would see that more like <clears throat> if someone's in total control and the other person literally has no control over their life or whatever, like whatever action they take or what they do, and then they feel trapped, like they literally can't get out of it. But if there's two people who have a bit of a fiery relationship back and forth, and I don't know, I don't know, maybe that's just yeah, me, but I don't really see it as abuse. If, if you look at abuse, I mean, uh, there's a spectrum of abuse there. You're talking about the emotional abuse, all the, the shouting, the screaming and the aggression as well. And this is what she was experiencing from him for the majority of the time. And yet yeah, Andre said that she was in control some of the times. Yes, she was in control of herself because she knew that she also had to defend herself. But nonetheless, he also upped the, the ante. He, she she, he upped also. it even more. And the fact is, yes, he was in a better position than she was in the first place. You know, I don't get the if, whole... If you're going to use that word, I can, I can use it for both of them. Like, if you're going to use that word. Yeah, I would... Like, I'm, you, just you, for both of them. you don't have to agree with what I'm saying, but what I'm saying to you is that, yes, he was... I saw him as the abuser in that. She yeah, was no, the I just, I just, I said for the majority of the time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, as I said, I, I just don't think either of them was really abusing each other. I just think they just had a toxic relationship and was upset with each other about something. And yeah. All right. So look, a lot of the conversation that we've had here is about the characters, the storyline, where it's been, where it's going, what's going on around them. And, and I think that's been a lot of the conversation online is people want to learn more about these characters. And there's been mentioned, I don't know how you guys are going to feel about this, but about a Malcolm and Marie number two. So, yes or no, Andre, would you be interested in watching a number two? I haven't seen anything like that, but um, that's a one and done movie. They don't need a part two. What for? That makes no sense to me whatsoever. I enjoy it. I, well, I wouldn't say the word enjoy it. I think it was, it was good, but I don't know why they would want to do a sequel for what? What reason? Des, what would you say? Would you go and see a number two? Yo, it, it, it'll be interesting to see if they come out of lockdown, you know what I mean? Because eventually we will come out of lockdown. They're likely to have kids as well. He's likely to make another movie. He's likely to thank her this time. He's likely to reflect on all this, uh, you know, the lockdown has taught him about his relationship, about his, uh, his attitude towards her, maybe getting some anger management as well. She also likely to be looking and reflecting on herself as well. And yeah, I want to see how it progresses out in the community, not just in one house, and maybe merge into some colour this time. Ooh, number two in colour. 
They're going in time, man. Not full colour, not full colour. <laughs> Sean, what are you saying? Would you be interested in watching number two? If it existed? Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I might I might be washing my hair that day. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Too much toxicity for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, come on. <laughs> All right, now the reason everybody tunes in to watch our film reviews is the ratings. Out of five stars, how many is it getting, Sean? Uh, well, I guess they're two good actors. I like them, so I'll give it, I don't know, three stars. Yeah, two up-and-coming actors. They're doing very well. They, they did something in Solitude. I would give it three stars as well. The music kind of pushed it for me. I thought it was really good performance, nice standout performances, definitely three stars for me. Yeah, I really enjoyed the performances. Um, but yeah, it's a three star movie for me in terms of it as a whole. I enjoy the performances, but yeah, three star. It's a three star performance because, well, that's all there really was to it is the performances of the two people in the movie. You know what I mean? <laughs> there you go, people. Did you enjoy Malcolm and Marie? Have you watched it yet? Are you going to watch it? Do you disagree? Do you agree with the guys? Let us know. Hit us up in those comments. Let us know what else you've been watching or what you want us to see or what you're looking forward to. The comments are there, people. While you're there, don't forget, there's show them where it is. If you ain't already, hit that subscribe button. I know. See that thing? The there? like button's there too. Boom. Ooh. Trust me. While you're there, hit the like button too. I want 5K on this one. I think we deserve it. Malcolm Marie, meh, but we do. Anyway, I'm Dan. It's the ladies' love. It's Andre. It's the original Garage Skanker, South London's finest, Sean, and North London's wildest. It's the OG, the one and only Des. This is Chatterbox. Hit us up on the socials, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace and love, people. Ooh.